Hello, welcome to Franklin County Home Health Agency's Where the Heart Is. I'm Jennifer DeSablo, your host for today's show. Franklin County Home Health Agency is a nonprofit organization that has been providing home health care and hospice services to people of all ages throughout Franklin County since 1969. We are happy to bring you this monthly show dedicated to offering information about our agency's programs and services, as well as helpful tips to help you and your loved ones stay safe and healthy at home. On today's program, we'll be talking about the important work of assessing for and preventing falls, especially in our senior population. And to talk about that, I have two members from Franklin County Home Health Agency's adult rehab team, Marissa Hurley, a physical therapist, who has been on the show before talking about physical therapy. Thank you for coming back. Oh, no problem, Jen. <laughs> and Ariel uh, Teitelbaum, mm -hmm. and you are an occupational therapist That's at right. Franklin County Home Health. So again, thank you both for being here. And before we start talking about today's program, which is uh, preventing falls in the senior population or understanding what falls mean for that population, let's just uh, remind us a little bit about physical therapy at Franklin County Home Health, Marissa, and what brought you to that home care setting. All right. Well. Um, home health PT, um, once you get out of the hospital, we help you stay out of the hospital. So a lot of debility and weakness. So if we can keep you strong enough to stay on your feet and stay home with your family through the holidays, we know we've done our job. Awesome, thank you. And how about you, Ariel, with occupational therapy? So a lot of what we focus on with occupational therapy are um, making modifications to people's home, finding the right equipment to help them keep doing what they really want to do, like say they want to take a shower but they're, they're worried about falling or something while they're in the shower, we can help figure out what is the best equipment for them. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of training on energy conservation and um, we do uh, some stuff with cognition and vision too. So we're kind of a broad mm -hmm. group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. And you two work, obviously work yes. closely together yeah, yes, as a do. team, physical therapy, occupational therapy. And of course we have a uh, speech therapist in our adult rehab program as well. Yes. Um, so what brought you to the home care setting? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I what attracts you? What attracts us? Well, <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's nice to see them in their homes, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's it's different than being in the <laughs> hospital where mm -hmm. you have a set structured day, and you know they must do this, they must do this. Um, at home, they they get to do what they want, mm -hmm. and you know, what's important to them. So the goal setting is a lot more functional, mm -hmm. which I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think it's the functional nature of being at home mm -hmm. and being able to help people be independent in what's important to them. Yeah. So we don't have to simulate stuff. We can go and do the actual thing. Mm -hmm. And I think um, the recommendations we make for PT and OT are very realistic mm -hmm. in terms of what's really gonna work. Because you're right there in their own right. environment. You can talk about how their bed looks versus a hospital right. bed or another Right, we're not pretending, we're not simulating. We can actually try it and see. Yeah. Very good. So both of you work with our adult rehab, so talk, um, before we talk about falls in particular, but what kind of patients do you see, what age range, um, what, what kind of conditions are they seeing? We see a pretty general group of conditions, and most of our people that we see are probably over the age of 60, but not always. Mm -hmm. We do see some people who have cancer who are much younger, or, you know, joint replacements that, you know, their knees wore out a little early, active sure. lifestyles. Yeah. So, but this time of year, we do get an influx of folks that do unfortunately have a slip and fall. Right. Um, that's the biggest time of year when you get a hip fracture is sure. this time of year because the ice is everywhere. Right. Yeah. So that's sort of why we're here today because exactly. that's why. <laughs> yeah, we're taping now. It's yeah. winter. We're right in the right. <laughs> throes of icy conditions and uh, snow and just bumpy areas. So yeah, falls, uh, and especially in this population that you see in the 60 and older, the senior population, why, what, what's so scary about falls? Why is it so important to understand what that means to this population? Do you want me to? Well, <laughs> well, a lot of times it's harder to recover when you're older. Mm -hmm. So that's a big thing. It's not like when you're a kid and you fall and you break your arm and then you wear a cast for like a month and then you're fine. You know, that's it. Well, With older adults, it just is a lot. There's a lot of other complicating factors usually and they just take longer to recover. Sure. Yeah. Some of those would include, you know, low bone density. So the fracture could be much worse than mm -hmm. if they were younger. Um, if they have a sedentary lifestyle to begin with and they're not getting back up there and doing what they need to do to heal and to build the strength back. So there's a lot more to worry about when folks are older. Okay, so talk, you, you mentioned low bone density, per, perhaps osteoporosis mm -hmm. or certain conditions. What are the other risk factors that uh, contribute to this population being at risk for falls? 
One is vision issues. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people's vision gets worse as they get older and sometimes they need to think about, you know, putting in extra lighting or increasing contrast because it's easier to trip if you can't see or even making sure you have the right prescription glasses. Oh, sure. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, you put off going to the eye doctor for years mm -hmm. and your prescription may not be right. Yeah. Can you talk back up a second about contrast? What do you mean yeah. by that? Well, sometimes for a lot of people, because we do see folks that have like macular degeneration mm -hmm. or other type of vision issues, sometimes it's a really simple adaptation that can reduce the risk of falling. Like you can add bright tape to like the edge of a stair or something so that it's easier to see so you don't just like walk right off the edge. Or some of us, like my house has this horrible drop down living room mm -hmm. and you know, it would be probably a good idea to put some bright tape along that edge so people don't step off and not realize. Reminder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good point. Another one would be f footwear. Mm -hmm. Footwear is really key, especially in the home. Some of our older adults don't get out as much, so they've got the same old pair of slippers that they've been wearing for the last three Christmases that might not yeah. fit them properly. What do you They're recommend about slippers or not shuffling slippers? Shuffling around, mm -hmm. you know, something that's going to fit your foot well, um, non-skid on the bottom, something rubber, um, and, some, and keep an eye on your feet, mm -hmm. especially for our diabetics. They've got impaired sensation in their feet. They're bumping. They can't tell where they're at. So, you know, a little bit of um, preventative stuff, mm -hmm. thinking and about what you're going to need to do. I'm glad you mentioned the foot care. We, we always try to remind the community that we offer a foot clinic at Franklin County Home Health Agency and around the community, and that's a great place for folks to have a chance for someone to be looking at their feet while they're doing the nails and cutting the nails and things, but it also gives a chance to check in on that and, of course, their doctor. Mm -hmm. um, so you're talking more about uh, some of the, you're beginning to talk a little bit about diseases and things that are intrinsic to a person, their eyes or their bones, but you're also talking a little bit about the environment. So yeah. Right. A lot of risk yeah, factors. Environment's huge. Mm -hmm. um, pets are a huge mm. risk factor for falls. Yeah. Um, we see folks where their little dog or cat is at their side for the whole visit, every visit. They're not going anywhere. Running up and down in between the legs of the walker. Yeah. Um, and um, the reaction time for some of our older adults isn't what it used to be. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's tough to tell Fluffy to get out of yeah. the way. <laughs> They're great companions right. and they need them, but we need to watch what, yeah. where we're stepping. Sure. Um, what, are, what are some other physical risk factors? Well, one thing injury? is medications. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people go to like their, right, their primary doctor and then they have all these specialists. And sometimes everybody doesn't always know all the things you're being prescribed. So, and if you're taking too many medications that have like a sedative effect or affect your thinking, it can put you at a higher risk of falling. Mm -hmm. So. One thing you uh, people can do is like make sure your primary has the full list, mm -hmm. so that you know you can make sure you're not accidentally over medicating yourself. Yeah, thank you. Especially yeah. with um, drops in blood pressure, mm -hmm. that's yeah. another big one that we see. So talk about that. How does that affect your body? Um, if you are on uh, too much blood pressure medication and it drops suddenly when you stand up, um, you might have a change in position very quickly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So a lot of education on some things that you could do to combat that. We always ask folks when they first stand up if they're feeling dizzy, don't just head out. Yeah. Give yourself a few seconds, take some deep breaths, make sure that you've got your feet underneath mm -hmm. you before you start going. And some of that can be easily changed with um, this dosage change at the with your doctor. Mm -hmm. Medicine or I imagine with watching what you're eating, if certain things might affect someone's sugar level at another time. or mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Um, what about, you're talking a lot about uh, the going to the doctor, let's talk about that team approach to this. Who all is involved? We have a physical therapist and occupational therapist here, but how, how do we work as a team to, to help this situation and preventing We falls? have nurses mm -hmm. as well, and they're really great for medication management. Mm -hmm. So they get the, all the medications that you're on and they can go through and if there's any discrepancies, they'll let mm -hmm. the doctor know. Mm -hmm. But we all kind of, we really work as a team. So. Like Marissa might be working with someone on how to get stronger so that they're not, they don't fear falling as much and they can, their legs can support them better. Well, I might be working with them on, you know, 
changing things in their environment so that they're safer doing mm -hmm. all of these tasks, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So we really, and we work pretty closely together. Sure. So, so would one program refer uh, someone yeah. to the next program? You don't start off with everything at once until you start seeing it. Um, well, in some cases, the doctor do. kind of knows going in that they're going to need all of us in some way, shape, or form. And then there's other occasions where I might just get called in and then do through the course of my evaluation notice. They might really need Ariel for this yeah. if it's outside my scope. Mm -hmm. There is some overlap in what we do. Mm -hmm. We're both very involved in home safety equipment, but um, there's definitely times where I definitely need Ariel's expertise sure. for a few of the little nuance. Things. And vice versa. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very good. And of course, the patient is at the center of this team in that situation. Like you said, with home care, that's what's so so great about home care. You have their uh, their their own space and, right. and it's specific to them. So what a great uh, gift for a patient to have so many people caring about yeah. you and looking out <laughs> for you. And about how long might you, I guess every case is different, but how long do services last with patients depending on it if somebody totally came depends. out of the hospital, it really depends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. as long as, they need, as there's a skilled need. Mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately, we can't stick around because you like us. That's mm -hmm. usually the case, you know, you <laughs> get so to likeable. know someone. <laughs> and we really enjoy spending time with them, but if we teach them the skills that they need to be safe and independent, mm -hmm. and then we, you know, we graduate them on, and then they could, you know, usually the family takes over from there. Yeah, and that's, I'm glad you mentioned that. It is the goal of home care right yes. there. Yes. Mm, teaching and independence, and we're yeah. able to do that. And we often work with, I mean, sometimes the goal is the person themselves will be completely independent, and sometimes it's like that family group, mm -hmm. like the person and their spouse. Sure. So we do a lot of family training. Yeah, because as you're talking, I'm thinking of someone living alone, but like you said, there can be a spouse there, and, and you're going to need to have them looking out for yeah. environmental factors and, and whatnot. Very good. So let's talk a little bit more about um, that environment. You did mention a few things, a very good advice about using some bright tape or things that yeah. bring attention. What else can happen in the home? Maybe oh, walk I from room to room and give us some environment. Well, tool. one thing that's helpful is have a light by your bed mm -hmm. so that when you have to get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, you can turn the light on and not be like staggering around in the dark. Um, another one would be throw rugs. They look nice, but um, if you use a device to walk, um, legs of walkers always get caught up on the edge of your carpet. Yeah. Um, if you can take them up, please do. If not, use some double-sided tape, mm -hmm. some sort of grip pad to keep it securely adhered to the ground. That's a great idea. Yeah. And in the, the bathroom's kind of a spot where a lot of people have a lot of fear because, you know, it can be slippery when you're wet, when you're getting in and out of the shower. So often we'll make recommendations about grab bars, like grab bar placement. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes people want something to sit on in the shower so that they don't have to worry about falling. So there's a lot of different options for that and we'll, you know, assess how the person moves and what they really need and their situation in their bathroom and make recommendations for that. Yeah. So simple things you can add to uh, oh, yeah. the bathroom. Grab bars that can be installed very easily and, and yes. talking about seats and bath mat, uh, non-slip things I'm thinking mm -hmm. of in the shower, sure. Uh, maybe. A, Handheld shower. A handheld shower is another yeah. really good option for yeah. people. Yeah, good. And, and then they get to the outside of the house, and we make sure that you keep, you know, salt or some sort of de-icer on your back steps. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to get almost home from your doctor's appointment just to have to turn around and go back. Yeah. Uh, we also brought some yak tracks. With oh us, yeah. Didn't we? Yeah. So I use these because we're walking around in the ice, mm -hmm. and these just fit right over your shoe. I don't know if I can show. Sure, we can get your foot up there. <laughs> so they're actually really easy to use, and they just fit right over your shoe. Yeah. And then they're really wonderful in the ice. They really give you a good yeah. grip. Just take them off when you're in the house because they'll ruin your hardwood floors. Yeah. And they're slippery on tile. Oh, yes. Which, yeah. yeah, so they're really great for the ice, though. Great. So if you're out walking around, I recommend that people at least, or at least if they're not going to do this, then get good boots. Yeah. So you're not walking around in like your slippery, kind of springy sneakers. But well, these are the great. Ice. I'm thinking, you know, it is the giving season and you've got some nice yeah. ideas. Hey, what a great little stocking stuffer. Yeah, for stocking stuff. and <laughs> you can get them at the hardware store, mm -hmm. you can get them at the sporting goods store, you can find them pretty much anywhere up here in Vermont. Yeah. So. One size fits all. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. They're pretty Smaller stretchy. Yeah. yeah. Simple tips like that, but also, like you said, um, using salt, even just 
shoveling or keeping it clear. Yeah. Um, imagine. Mm -hmm. um, what about the kitchen? Let's going back to inside for a minute and going, you talked about the, the, the bathroom and the, the floors and lighting, but specific to the kitchen, are there concerns about falling? Well, I think one thing that you want to think about in your whole house is clutter. Because mm -hmm. a lot of us, are, myself included, are clutterers. And when you're, say you're using a walker or a cane, you know, when you have clutter all over the place, it makes it easier to trip. Mm -hmm. So in your kitchen, you know, just try to make, or all your, in your dining room, whatever, try to make your spaces more clear. The, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people have throw rugs in their kitchen, so using the taping down strategy or getting rid of the throw rugs. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, I think that would be very good. So another thing you mentioned earlier, you said briefly, was about energy conservation. Um, tell us what that is, um, and how do you help people work on energy conservation? Well, one of the comorbidities that a lot of our folks have is COPD, mm -hmm. and our folks with COPD, um, well, one, they're they're afraid of not being able to breathe, so they limit what they're doing. When you're limiting what you're doing, you're getting weaker. When you're getting weaker, you're not able to keep your balance because you're not practicing those strategies. So um, what Ariel and I do as therapists is teach them ways to break down tasks. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I remember this time you're telling me where someone was getting too tired trying to do an entire shower. So say, okay, well, let's just do the upper half mm -hmm. and then take a break for a while. And, you know, relaxation, breathing, mm -hmm. things to help keep them relaxed so they can build the confidence in order to be more independent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good, good point. I mean, wouldn't think about falling and, you know, just breathing, having yeah. to be like a Anxiety is a Anxiety. huge factor. Yeah, talk about that, some more of the fear. Well, the biggest risk factor we've been reading about in our research for this interview is the biggest predictor of a fall is a prior fall. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That fear really limits a lot of our folks because they said, well, I can't fall if I don't move. Yeah. And then a whole host of things can happen after that. So if we can help them combat that fear mm -hmm. and figuring out what's actually at the root of their problem, mm -hmm. it's not usually an inability, it's just being afraid that they'll, you know, they might not have gotten hurt the first time, but now they know. Yeah that it could happen. So it's like a snowball effect. They're, they right. fell, it was a horrible experience. They're, now they're afraid and they're, like you said, they're not building strength because they aren't moving like they used to. So you come in and help them regain strength and that um, just confidence, I guess. Yeah. Right. That's, that's a good point. So, you know, they're preventable. This is a preventable thing, like you said, if you, you give people confidence and tools and tips, but they do happen. Mm -hmm. um, no matter what we do, accidents happen, falls happen. Uh, what what happens then? What's the first thing uh, if a caregiver is nearby and someone fall, falls? What do you tell them to do? Well, we usually tell people to call 911 because it's you can get injured trying to lift your loved one off the floor. So generally, we don't recommend doing that. Mm -hmm. So normally, we say you know if they do fall, mm -hmm. then call 911. Mm -hmm. Good point. We do also have a lot of our folks um, at least get information on the lifeline system or. Um, just the bracelet or the necklace. Sometimes if folks live alone, mm -hmm. you don't even have to press the pendant. It's motion activated, so it can tell yeah, if no, you've fallen. <laughs> so that's a really nice tool for, yeah. you know, if your loved one is alone for a good portion of the day. Yeah, that's great. And we do training on how to get off the ground. Yeah. Because sometimes maybe you fall, but you didn't get hurt mm -hmm. and you just kind of like slid off your chair or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, Marissa was just doing this with somebody the other day. How do you help somebody or how do you get off the ground so that's a skill that the pts often work with people on yeah that's good you you have fallen and you might not need to call somebody or you might need to just get up to the right. chair to then talk with somebody about maybe being concerned about the fall right. or, or having been hurt yeah, yeah good point and so um any other prevention measures we haven't mentioned that you'd um, want to bring up well if they haven't had a fall yet yeah. and we get in and there's some basic ways for us to assess mm -hmm. how high of a risk they are. Mm -hmm. um, there are some just questionnaire tools where it's a self-assessment. Mm -hmm. We have one of those mm -hmm. which you can assess yourself. Right, so There's they- some they, questions. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the fall efficacy scale. Mm -hmm. And you can get it on the internet too. The fall efficacy scale, okay. Yep, so it's just asking you if you're concerned about getting dressed or undressed, how you're making meals, getting in and out of your chairs, so something easy to go yeah, through. Yeah, and you and rate that. yourself, yep. and then it can give you a little feedback on where areas of concern yeah. are. Yeah, to share. And then during our actual assessments, there's a few 
um, quick tests that we can do. There's one called the timed up and go test or the tug if you want the therapy lingo where we just ask um, the client to stand up um, with or without a device depending on the person, walk 10 feet at a speed that feels comfortable for them, turn around, come back, and sit back down in the chair. Mm -hmm. Based on the amount of time that that takes, that gives us an idea of their fall risk. Mm -hmm. For a healthy individual, it should take under 12 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, once you become an older adult, um, the cutoff score gets a little bit higher. If you're a frail elderly adult in your home, and you've got a walker, and it's got the brakes and the swivel reels, we know that you're not going to be you know, getting yeah. any speeding tickets mm -hmm. with that. If you can make it <laughs> under 32 seconds, we know that that's safe for you. Yeah. And you've observed how they're doing that. Right, if they yeah. could do it safely, they show good judgment, mm -hmm. it gives us a, a good rough indicator of how high of a fall risk mm -hmm. there are. Mm -hmm. um, if they do have other medical factors, vertigo, things like that, then we we'll, might have to go into some more testing of different things we could do to help them get a little bit more steady on their feet. Okay, good. So assessing early yeah. on and, and reassessing and making sure that your plan of care is appropriate. Yes. Right. Yeah. Very good. Um, what about res other resources uh, that people can go to for concerns about falls or um, you know, places that you, where they might be able to buy things or you mentioned online? Do you have any other resources yeah, to share? Yeah, there's a ton of websites that are dedicated to um, like giving older adults or any adults mm -hmm. information on falls. That, the one where I got that one from, mm -hmm. which I'm not sure if I wrote down, mm -hmm. but um, if you even just look online, there's a lot of information basically outlining what we've talked about today on mm -hmm. things you can do in your home and how to stay active. Mm -hmm. Staying active is probably one of the best things you can do for mm -hmm. yourself in terms of keeping your body strong, keeping your bones mm -hmm. s as strong as possible you know, so that you can retain your physical ability and reduce your risk of falling. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing everyone can do. And it ha can be at many different levels. It doesn't have to be like running three miles or whatever. <laughs> it could be like doing like chair aerobics even, mm -hmm. or chair yoga, or tai chi, or there's a ton of different options that work on balance and coordination and strength that can help, I think, all older adults to whatever level um, kind of retain their physical ability to reduce their fall mm -hmm. risk. Absolutely. Staying active, yeah. or I'm sure you do show exercises like she said you can do yes. in a chair or somewhere. Yeah. You know, can, anything that you can show us here or talk about? Well, um, it depends on the individual. Mm -hmm. Some folks, they, you know, if their energy level doesn't allow them to do too much standing, there could be a lot of upper body stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of it centers around your core strength and stability so if you see them in their yeah. in their chair all day but you know even just getting them to sit up straight and activate that core musculature everything starts from the middle so if that can stay strong and then we can start doing some different functional reaching tasks outside their base of support and then they get some confidence okay maybe I can go this way or that way maybe I could try that standing up so it's all it's baby steps yeah. You know, especially if there has been a fall, mm -hmm. it's getting up is the first step. Good, good job. And like you said, just you're, you're there, to, there's something everybody can do and, and you can help them get to that point. So remind us how individuals can receive care from Franklin County Home Health if they need it. Well, you have to be referred from a physician. Mm -hmm. So I think w if you feel like you're getting weaker and you need assistance and help from us, um, you would call your doctor and ask for a referral. Mm -hmm. Yep, your primary care physician. Yes. Um, some folks get referred straight from home and other folks will come back from a rehab facility or the hospital where typically the, those referrals come straight from the facility that they're at. But if you're home, nothing's happened yet, but you notice some changes, go see your primary care physician and we can see what we can do to help you. Excellent. So we want individuals to do that, talk to their doctor, loved ones who are concerned to encourage them to talk yeah. with a doctor or on a visit with them to bring these issues up so that it doesn't get an oversight. So we want to prevent these falls. Thank you ladies for um, all the work you do in Franklin County and for, for so many people. We really appreciate your work and thanks for coming in today and talking about this topic. And uh, if anybody watching has questions about preventing falls, as Ariel and Marissa mentioned, you can check things out online. We also have a website you can learn more about our agency's programs and services at www.fchha.org and you can call us at 802-527-7531. We thank you for watching today and be well.